bright duty every student matters hello students welcome to the math lesson where we are going to learn about data handling and in this lesson in this particular uh, unit that you are going to cover in this particular lesson we will cover about the introduction to data handling so let us see what all things we are going to cover in today's lesson after we are done with today's lesson you will be able to know what is meant by data handling then you will know how you are supposed to use data handling and then you will able to recognize data organize data and you will also learn about pictographs right so let us begin with our today's lesson first we'll understand what do we mean by the word data itself okay so the word data a data is basically a collection of numbers gathered to give some information so data is a very big word like Though the word is small, but what the meaning of this particular word is, is like it is basically a collection of numbers. It can be anything. For example, data can be how many um, galaxies do we know till now? How many stars do we know till now? So look how big the data can be. How many cars has been manufactured so far in India? How many companies are there which work only about computers? How many... Um, like anything whatever you think like for example here it's given how many uh, like say in your society you are asking people what is the color of their car and you see that 16 people have got red cars and 12 people have got green cars then five people have got blue cars so what do you see in front of you it's a data that has been collected okay so data is basically a collection of numbers that gathered some information and it is very important the biggest example of data that you see is when um every year or in every five years um the government they get the total number of people living in india so they calculate the total number of births taking place and they take away what is the tally of the total deaths that have taken place so this is all is an example of data Okay, so data is something very important. It's very useful to learn about a particular thing in a very concise and a very efficient manner. Okay, let us learn how we can record a particular data. Okay, recording the data depends upon the requirement of the data. Everybody has different ways to record the data. Now, this is a very important thing. It says everybody has different ways to record data. If we have to compare the choice of the people about certain movies, then we have to collect the data of the survey which tells the choice of the people about those movies. Say for example, if I'm asking you what kind of movie do you like, probably your answers are like comedy movies. And if uh, someone asks me what kind of movies I like, I like horror movies. So these are different genres of which people prefer the movies respectively. It can be um, there some people like comedy movies, some people like thrillers, some people like horror movies. Some So it's different, um, like different categories and how we are collecting the data, it's different. Now, when we collect a certain data, we need to organize the data. Okay, so you have got the data, say you are asking the same number of people, same particular question to everybody in your class. Say you are asking what is your favorite dish, okay, so you are asking what is your favorite dish in your class. In your class probably there are 40 people, okay, so 40 children are there in your class and you go to each and every person and you ask say uh, role number one, what do you like? So role number one says that I like to eat the pizza. Then roll number two, what do you like? Roll number two says, I like to eat burger. Then roll number three says, I like to eat a rajma chawal. For example, so every person will have different answers. So this is basically that we are getting is a data of what do these children, they like to eat, right? Now, suppose you just wanted to know one thing. You wanted to know how many people like pizza in your class. So maybe out of 40 people, you saw that 15 people like pizza. So this is the information that is required to you. So how we are recognizing the data and how now we are organizing the data is a very important thing to do. Let us read about organizing the data. It says raw data is difficult to read. 
Is that right? If you keep on writing 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and till 40 you write and for every number you are writing pizza, burger, rajma chawal, pasta, then uh, chow mein and then noodles etc etc. So every number you'll see so much of data is there in front of you and it's very difficult to read. So what will you do? You will organize the data in a tabular form. Tabular form is in a form of a table. Data is represented in a tabular form using frequency distribution. This is something very important. Very soon you will learn about this. And the tally marks. Another important word coming up here. Frequency distribution and tally marks. Okay. Frequency tells the number of times a particular observation happens. Okay. Something happening number of times, it is called the frequency. So say pizza is liked by, say roll number 2 said pizza, then roll number 6 said pizza, then roll number 11 said pizza, then roll number 17 said pizza. So after some time, you see that the pizza word is like repetition in repetition. So the number of times you see that this particular thing is occurring again and again. So this is the frequency of that particular observation. Okay, so frequency tells the number of times particular observation has happened. Okay, let us understand about these representation of data and organizing this data and what exactly a data is. Let us see some questions. Okay, now what is tally marks? This is something very important that we must know. Tally marks are used to show the frequency of the data and how it is represented. Look in the example. We put one, one line, one horizontal line, I'm sorry, one vertical line in front of the frequency one. So it represents one. Two represents by represented by two lines, three represented by three lines, four by four lines, and when it comes to five, you draw four lines and then you cut the four lines. Okay. So if now you want to write six, you have already one, two, three, four, cut. It's 5 in total and then it's 1. So this gives 6. Then if you want to put 7, this will be 7. 8, 9 and if you want to put 10, you cross it again. So this particular sign that you see, this is a total of 5. Okay. So these are 5 and 5 each and if I add them together, it's a 10. I hope this is clear. If not, no worries. We are doing questions related to this to make it more clear. Here is an example. Let us read what the question is what data this particular question holds and how we are going to use this data to represent some information out of it. It says there are 30 students in a class. They have to choose one sport each for the sports period. Okay. Five took badminton, seven, seven, uh, I'm sorry, 10 took cricket, four took football, one took hockey, three took tennis and seven went for volleyball. Represent this data in the frequency table distribution. Frequency distribution table, I'm sorry. So let us read what are the steps that we need to follow in order to make a frequency distribution table. So the first step says make a table with three columns. Okay, then we need to write the name of all the sports in first column. Write the respective frequencies in the uh, corresponding to each of the sport in the second column and then in the tally we'll put the represented frequency. Now let us see how. Look at here. In the first column that you see we have got sports. Then the sports were badminton, cricket, football, hockey, tennis and volleyball. That is the particular sport that sport that a particular child has opted for. Then how many people have opted for badminton? So the number is Five people have opted for badminton. How many people have opted for cricket? It is 10. How many people have opted for football? It is 4. How many people for hockey? 1. How many for tennis? 3. And for volleyball it is 7. Okay. Now how can we put the tally marks for this? So when it is 5, we put straight vertical lines 4 and then we cross them all to represent the number 5. For 10, you will do it twice. For say 3, you just need to put 3 straight lines. Then for 7, you put 5 straight lines. I mean 4 straight lines, cut them all so that it becomes 5. And then 2 more, so it becomes 7. I hope it's clear how we put the tally. Let us see one example here. It says, 
A teacher wants to know the choice of food of each student as part of the midday meal program. The teacher assigns the task of collection of collecting this information to Maria. Maria does so using a paper and a pencil. After arranging the choices in a column, she puts against a choice of food one mark for every student making that choice. So what she did, uh, what she did is she has made two columns. In the first column, she has written the choice. So maybe some people like rice, some people like chapati, and some would like to prefer both chapati and rice. So what she did, when a person, she asked each and every child. So she went to first child. She asked, what do you like? Say the person said, I like rice. So she marked a one in front of uh, the column where she has written rice. Then one of the child said, I like both rice and chapati. So she marked a one there for both rice and chapati. Then one said, I like chapati. So she marked a one there in front of chapati. And so she went to each and every child. And then this is the data that you can see in front of you that she has collected. Okay. Now it's really difficult to collect and read this particular kind of data. If you see these many number of lines. So how am I supposed to read this? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. So the total number of people that like rice only is 70. But do you see how difficult it is to read all these small, 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 small lines? So a better way to do this is by using the tally mark table. So do you see now it's so simple. It's 5, 5, 5. So it is 15 and 2. So it's 17. Simple to read. Now if I want to read how many people like both rice and chapati, instead of counting each of these lines individually, what will I do? I'll do 1, 2, 3, 4 times 5, that is 20. Simple. Now let us do a question ourselves. So the question says Ekta is asked to collect data for a size of shoes of students of class 6. Her finding are recorded in the manner that is shown to you in the box that is the blue block box you see several numbers these are basically the sizes of the shoes okay so let us write this in the table below so here first of all what we need to write is that what is the shoe size so shoe size okay now in shoe size we are going to write what is the smallest number that you see in shoe size i think four is the smallest number so let us write 4 here. Then we have got 5, 6, 7 and 8. I think that's all. These are the number of shoe sizes that we have in the box. So we have just selected. We have 5 so many times in the table. So we have written it once. We see 4 so many times in the table. We have written it once. So every number that you see, it is being repeated. Okay. So we write 1 for each. Now let us write tally. This column, we are going to put the tally marks, okay? So starting with the first one, 5. So here in the column, we'll put a 1. Here it is a 4. So we'll put a 1 in the column where we see 4. Then 7. 7 we'll put here. Then 5 we'll put here. Then 6 we'll put here. 7 here. 6 here. 5 here. 6 here. 6, here, 5, here, 4, here, 5. Now in 5 we have already written 4. So because it's 5th time, so we cross it off. Okay. So now 6, again, cross it off. 8, once, 7, 3rd time, 4, 3rd time, 6, 6th time, 5, 6th time, 6, 7th time, 4, 4th time, 6, 8th time, then 5 again, then we have got a 7, then we have got a 6 again, then we have got a 7 again, then we have got a 5, then we have got a 7, then we have got a 6, then we have got a 4, then we have got a 8, and then we have got a 7. So this is the tally marks that we have done. Now let us write the frequency. 
frequency is the number of times something is happening. So 4 is, look into the tally, how many times 4 has occurred? 5 times. Simple. How many times you see 5 has occurred? So it's a block of 5 and then 3 more, so it is 8. How many times 6? It is 10. How many times 7? So it is 5, 6, 7. And how many times 8? It is 2. So how many children, how many students of class 6 are wearing um, the shoe size 4? It is 5 students. How many students are wearing uh, the shoe size of 6? So the answer is 10. How many children has got the shoe size more than 6? So it is the people wearing the shoe size of 7 and 8. So it is 7, 8, 9 people total are wearing the shoe size bigger than 6. So I hope this is clear how we have used this data that was given in this big table. This was a random data that we have collected. This is the whole data part. And what we have done? We have recognized the data that this is the particular data that we have got. Then we have organized this data in this particular table. That is the whole frequency distribution table. This is the name given to this table. That is frequency distribution table. Clear? Now, let us read about pictograph. What is a pictograph? If we represent the data with the pictures of objects instead of numbers, so far what we have discussed is we are using the numbers in order to represent the data. Now, instead of using numbers, what if we are using a certain picture to show or represent the data? Instead of numbers, then it is called pictograph, right? What is a pictograph? Well, instead of number, we are using the objects to represent the data. It is called a pictograph. Pictures makes it easier to understand the data and answer the questions related to it, but just by seeing it, okay? So now, instead of marking those lines and then adding them all, you can represent the bigger data into using these images. For example, what you see in front of you is that here the names are given. Adam, Lily, Sarah, Suzanne, and Sam. Now, how many number of toys they have got with them? They are representing one particular teddy bear represents 10 toys. Okay, it's not that they are having 10 teddy bears each. No, it is just that if one teddy bear you see, that means he's having 10 toys. Okay, so how many toys do you think Adam has got? Here we can see two teddy bears in front of the name Adam. So he has got 2 times 10, that is 20 toys. Clear? Now let us look for Sarah. How many toys Sarah has got? Each toy represents 10 toys, right? So each teddy bear represents 10 toys. Sarah has got 3 um, these teddy bears in front of her name. So that means 3 times by 10. So Sarah has got 30 toys. Now Sam has got how many toys? Sam has got just 10 toys because he has got one teddy bear in front of this. Now just look at the image and tell me who out of all these has got the maximum number of toys. I'm sure it's easy to see that Suzanne because she is having one, two, three, four and five teddy bears. So it's basically she's having 50 toys with her. So she's having the maximum number of toys. I hope this is clear how we can read a particular pictograph which is represented by using these images, these uh, pictures of some objects instead of numbers. Okay, and I hope you have understood how using just one image we can represent a bigger number of data. Now, how can we interpret this pictograph? In the pictograph, we have to understand it and get the information from the pictures given. Like we just read about these teddy bears and what toys, how many toys, one particular picture is representing. If we have to represent more number of items, then we can use the key which represents more number of pictures. For example, if say, if I'm drawing this smiley and I'm saying this smiley represents say 100 children, okay, 100 children. So let's say I'm saying that in class 6, I want to write there are 400 children. Okay, so in front of class 4, I will draw 1, 2, 3 and 
four such smiley faces. It will show that in total there are 400 children in class 6. Say I'm writing for class 10, there are 350 children. So what will I do? See, I'll draw three complete faces and then for this one, I'll draw a half face. Okay, this will represent 350. It's fun to draw these images while working with pictograph. So this is how you can write half. So instead of drawing the complete image, I have just drawn half of the face. So it shows that um, in 10th class, instead of uh, like instead of complete face representing 100 children, it's just a half face which represents 50 children. So it is 350 children in class 10. Okay. Now let us see one example how we are going to read these numbers in pictograph. So now. It says the example, the number of cars parked in a parking lot every day is given in the picture. So in a particular parking lot, say a parking of a mall, you have so many cars parked in a single day. So what they are doing, they are going to represent the number of cars. Instead of in numbers, they are representing it using these pictures. So it says that one car is represent that one particular image of this car, it is representing five cars, okay? So can you tell me how many cars are parked in Monday? If each image is representing five cars in Monday, how many cars do we have? We have got one, two, three and four. So if on Monday four cars are being represented, so each car represents five cars. So it is four times by Five. So basically 20 cars were parked on Monday. So how many cars were parked on Thursday? So it is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So it is 5 times by 5. It is 25 cars that were parked on Thursday. Clear? Now let us see example here. It says find the day with the highest number of cars that are parked in how many? So just look into the image, I'm sure you can just look into the image and tell which number, which particular day has got the biggest number of cars being parked. So clearly it's Tuesday because 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 cars were parked and 8 cars represents 8 times 5 equals 40 cars. So the question was so find the day with the highest number of cars. So the day is Tuesday. And how many cars? So it was 40 cars were parked, right? Now the next one is what is the least number of cars um, when the when the least number of cars did park? So clearly the first day that was Monday, we have got the least number of cars that were parked because it was just 20 cars that day. Clear? It's simple. Now let's look at this particular image. The following pictograph shows the number of absentees in a class of 30 students during the previous week. So here each child face that you see in front of you is representing one absentee in the class. So on Monday, how many children are absent? One, two, three, four and five, right? On Tuesday, how many do you see absent? It is four. On Wednesday, it's two. On Thursday, it's zero on friday it is one and maximum students were absent on saturday one two three four five six seven and eight children absent on saturday so let us read some questions and answer according to the pictograph that we have on which day were the maximum number of students absent so i hope you know the answer it was saturday eight children right let's look at the second one which day had full attendance full attendance means no child was absent so we see on thursday thursday it was um full attendance why because zero children were absent probably here on this particular day, day there were more games period and arts periods right now what was the total number of absentees in that week in that week means the complete week we need to find the total number of absentees. So 5 on Monday, 4 on Tuesday, 2 on Wednesday, 0 on Thursday, 1 on Friday, 8 on Saturday. So we need to find the total of them all. So it is 10 and 15, 15 and 4, 19 and total we see 20. 
So in the complete week, what is the total number of the total number of absentees? So how do we write this? We write it as total number of absentees in that week is 20. Clear? Moving ahead, let's rework another question, which is again a pictograph question. It says the colors of fridges preferred by people living in a locality are shown by the following pictograph. So you can see in the first column we are given colors that is blue, red, green, yellow, white and black. Then we have got the number of people that is shown and each person that is drawn here represents 10 people. So let us see how many people like blue. So how many people do we have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So 8 people like blue colors. So 8 and each one is representing 10 people. So times it by 10. So it is 80 people. Clear? Now for red. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. 11 times by 10 is 110 people. What is for green? It is 30. What is for yellow? It is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 60. What is for white? It is 20. And for black? It is 30. Clear? Now let us answer the related question. It says find the number of people preferring blue color. So we have already answered this. How we are going to write? We are going to write number of people preferring blue color is equal to how many do you see in the images? 1, 2, 3, it's 8. So we write 8 times by 10 is equal to 80 people. Okay. Now the next one, how many people liked red color? So let us see in the red it is 11 people. So red color is liked by 11 times by 10 is equal to 110 people. Clear, simple and easy to read from a pictograph. Now let us see here. It says a survey was carried out on 30 students of class 6 in a school. Data about the different modes of transport used by them to travel to school was displayed as a pictograph. What can we conclude from the pictograph? So here you can see in front of you, you see one smiley face, it represents one student. So private car is being referred by, preferred by how many students? One, two, three and four. Public bus is preferred by one, two, three, four, five people. And school bus is what most of the children they prefer. Then cycle is preferred by three and walking is preferred by some of them. Okay, so let us um, write some questions. Let us answer for each of them. So how many children like private cars? It is one, two, three, four. So it is four students. Public bus, it is five students. For this, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, eleven people. For cycle, it is three people. And for walking, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it is seven people. Now I'm going to ask you a few questions. Let us answer these questions. Say my question is, how many um, how many students prefer cycle um, in order to uh, come to their school as a mode of transport? So the answer is three students out of 30 students in the class, six, right? Now, um, if I ask you which is the most uh, preferred mode of transport? So the answer is school bus. What is the least preferred transport mode? So the answer is cycle. Which particular transport mode is preferred by five students? So the answer is uh, private bus. I mean, sorry, public bus, right? So um, if I ask you, um, how many children prefer to come by private cars? So the answer is four students. So this is how you can read a particular pictograph and you can make several questions out of it. And whatever question is being asked to you, you can answer it easily just by looking at the Pictograph. Let us move to the next pictograph now. It says following is the pictograph of the number of wrist watches manufactured by a factory in a particular week. 
So the wrist watch here, one wrist watch represents 100 wrist watches because we are talking about a factory and in a factory there is a lot of number of manufacturing taking place, right? So let us see how many wrist watches are made on Monday. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 6 images are drawn. So if it is 6 images, so it is basically 6 times by 100 because each watch is representing 100. So how many on Monday are manufactured? 600 are manufactured on Monday. So this is how you can read. Let us talk about Tuesday because here we have got half of this watch. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 7 complete watches and half we see. So we have got 7 times by 100. That is 700 and plus we have got half here. So it is 50 more. Okay. So total is 750 on Tuesday. So let us see some questions how we can answer it. It says on which day were the least number of wrist watches manufactured. So which particular day do you see out of all these uh, six days which has got the least number of manufacturing? So the answer here is you can see in Saturday on Saturday we have got one, two, three, four, five and a half. So five represents five times hundred equals five hundred. And this particular half image represents 50 more. So how many do we see on Saturday? It is 550. So on which day least number of wrist watches are manufactured? So we can write it is on Saturday. And how many? It was 550 watches. Now the next one, on which day were the maximum number of wrist watches manufactured? So let us see here, how many do you see maximum? Um, I think we can clearly see that on Thursday, we have got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and 8 full complete watches that is made. So 8 means 8 times by 100 equals 800 watches. So on which day? On Thursday we have got, let us write it here, Thursday and how many watches? 800 watches. Right? Now let us see the next one. Find out the appropriate, uh, I'm sorry, approximate number of wrist watches manufactured in a particular week. So we need to require to find out the approximate number of all the watches that have been manufactured in this particular week. So let us see what is the number of manufacturing on Wednesday. On Wednesday, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and 50 more. So it is 650. On Friday, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. So it is 600. So let us find the total of it. So it is 600 plus 750. Let's keep on writing. So it is 600 plus 650 plus 750 plus 800. I hope I'm going correct. So let's check. We have written 600, 650, 750, 800. We need 600 more and 550. So it's 600 more and 550. Let's add them. 650 added to 600. So it is 600 plus 650 plus 750 plus, I'm sorry, let me just do it again. 600 plus 650 plus 750 plus 800 plus 600 plus 550. So the total that we have is 3950. That is the total number of watches that have been manufactured in the complete week.